Welcome to Speak Free with Maddie G, the podcast that celebrates free speech, truth, and open discussion. Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Speak Free with Maddie G. My guest today is a good mate of mine, Ben Mills, the founder, owner of Next Gen Fitness in North Richmond. And uh, we're going to talk a bit about that today, about your journey with that. Um, we have talked about it on the radio previously, um, yep. so we'll, but we'll be rehashing a little bit of that. Matt. Um, and uh, yeah, and then talking about some upcoming things you want to do, um, some upcoming business ventures um, and the journey you're sort of going on with that. And uh, also how you balance being a successful business owner with mm. personal your personal life. Yeah. Uh, and I guess growing up, you know, because you're only young. So. Yeah. Still but, yeah. a bit young. So take me back. We'll, uh, we'll just go. Oh, sorry. I've just got to get the display up. I forgot. It's all good. <laughs> um, but we'll just go back to, um, I guess, the beginning. How did it all start? Um, how old were you? What year was it? Oh. All that. Tell me the story. Well, like, I think um, I've loved it since I was like five, eh? So trying to be trying to like just play footy and loving all sorts of sports you start to get that mindset of wanting to be able to train people or train yourself um but i think it's i think it all clicked properly when i was like 12 13 what i wanted to do i either wanted to be in sport or train people in sport um so when i was like 12 i started getting it wasn't like it didn't mean that much but i started getting like uh letters from penrith for reps football and then once I got that, um, my sister said, well, she's a sports science. She's got all her degrees and PhDs and all that shit. Um, so she started to, like, test out her sort of stuff on me. I was like a hamster. And then once she started training me um, specifically for football, I started to just click that I think I actually wanted to train people. Um, I got a bit of a kick out of seeing results for myself and I wanted to see results for other people. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like 12 is when it fully clicked in my head that I wanted to train people properly. Uh, I started training like my mom and doing weird shit with her and just trying to suss out what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, probably 12 was when it fully clicked that I wanted to be a, some sort of coach or trainer or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. And, um, so then getting the gym, obviously, um, how old are you now? I am, I'm turning 22 in like six days. Turning 22 in yeah. six days. That will probably be when, is it? What's your de- what's your birthday? Mm, February twenty. Twenty. Okay. You don't know how many days away. <laughs> it's four days. <laughs> four days. <laughs> what's the date? <laughs> hey, what is the date today? Is it the sixteenth today? I don't know. No, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah it okay. Is well, it's four days. Yeah. <laughs> four days. <laughs> I was just thinking, if it drops in, if your birthday's in six days, this drops in six days. So I was thinking, fuck. Oh. Me. What a birthday present. Present. Yeah. So it, people watching this, you are twenty. Two. 22 yeah. yeah yeah i'm old <laughs> uh you're not old you're fucking young. <laughs> it's a very young age to sort of uh i guess know what you're doing in yeah life. that's um, true to have a definite goal um you know i'm 24 and i have no fucking clue what the fuck i'm doing <laughs> yeah that's 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 a lot of people bro <laughs> yeah like i i try different things and whatnot but you have a pretty set um yeah. plan ahead. yeah yeah um so the gym what age were you when you opened next gen i was 19 19 so I've had the gym basically for three years, um, but I've had it running for probably about two. I reckon with all the fires, floods and COVID, I reckon we've been shut for a year at least. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I started, I think for a month in, we had this big fire outbreak. And then about a few weeks after we got back into it, then we had a flood and then COVID hit like two months after that. So yeah. I'm paying like whatever I was paying for rent and still had to pay it all while all this was going on. So yeah. fucking COVID, bro. Yeah, like, it's not, yeah, it's not easy. It's not been easy on especially small business owners. Yeah, 100%. Especially bro. new small business and owners. There, there, wasn't, there wasn't that much help, to be honest. Um, I was just lucky at that time I didn't live outside of home like I do now. If yeah. it happened now, uh, I'd, be, I'd be all right, but like I wouldn't be as breezy as I was back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... It was definitely, it was definitely tough, and I almost like, I was almost like, fuck, like, do I really want to, do I really want to do this? I could go work for someone and still get paid for staying at home. Yeah, you know what I mean. But if I'm, if I'm not there, I don't make money. So, so it was sort of, it was sort of like a fifty-fifty thing where I had to try and think if this is definitely what I want to do because there was so much going on, and I, I honestly, 
my first year of business was tough as like yeah. but I, th- I think I just I had a lot of people tell me like if you can get through this you can probably get through anything um, so I took that into account and I sort of just thought well if this is the hardest thing and I'm still getting clients making money posting good content um, then I guess I'll just be better long term you know yeah yeah and I guess with um, well, especially with COVID I think gyms were hit you know, oh. almost as hard as the hospitality industry. Hundred um, percent. Like they were very quick to close gyms, very slow straight to away. Open them, um, and that was yeah, that was an ongoing um, sort yeah. of issue that kept rising up. That I I talked a lot about. It was crazy, bro. And the funny thing is, they they say like the, it's 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 normally like it's not the um the fit people that are that are getting hit with COVID as hard. Yeah. It's actually the unhealthy people. I'm like, well, why are you taking away the things that make them unhealthy? Exactly. And what was still open? Maccas. Kids, <laughs> everything, and bottle and everything. Yeah, bottle yeah, Everything was still, still open. Drunk. You can still be an alcoholic. Legit. Um, it was so good. frustrating, like, seeing all this stuff, saying, oh, you need to stay healthy and stuff, but they shut everything that yeah. made it healthy. <laughs> so, yeah. So dumb. Know. It was a bit weird. Yeah. Don't gather outside. Stay indoors. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what kind Don't of... go to the like, park. Like, yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. Um, but I guess, so, 19, it's been three years now. You've you've obviously grown a lot. Yeah. Um. I know you changed location. Yeah. Changed slightly. locations. Um. Same. Fucking. Yeah. Same basically the yeah, same just block, back. just bigger. <laughs> yeah. But bigger, and um, your clientele is growing rapidly. Yeah. Um. So how many clients do you have now? Um. Well, when we're on the show, I think we had about the sh- your last show. I think we had about sixty, seventy. Um. We ended up getting to about ninety-five. Um, before the last COVID, the, the bloody big one. Yeah. Um, and then over COVID, we probably lost about ten. So we're sitting at about eighty-five to ninety now. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not that great with my numbers. Um, my partner does all the KPIs and stuff like that. So, um, it was a bit of a bummer because you were. So, I was so close to that hundred mark, and that was something I've always. That's something I've always wanted to hit. Yeah. I'll hit it this year. Um, and it'll be a big moment for me, but. Right now, yeah, eighty-five to ninety members. So yeah, and it's all group. It's, uh, it's group. It's all group classes. Yeah. Um, and do you do like private PT? Yeah, I do PTs. Um, I try and stick to, I, I try and stick to just being doing the afternoons. Um, I try and wake up in the morning. I haven't been good that much with content lately. Um, not lately, just ever really, because I've just I'm still getting my head around just just posting and. Um, for my my personal page, next gen, it's a lot to um, it's a lot to do when you're not. It's like I'm not getting paid for this this social media aspect, but you need to do it if yeah. you want to try and grow. Um, and that's the thing I'm trying to think of. While it, when, whenever I get up, I'm trying to think of everything else I'm trying to do to make money outside of the gym as well, yeah. or even in the gym. It, but then I've got to think content last because it's it's not making me money at the time yeah. but if i'm not if i'm not posting content frequently then i can tell always tell when the gym starts to go down or my instagram starts to go down um so once i can just just get my head around that um i'll be a lot better yeah i'm still trying to figure it out properly oh so am i i it's mean i did just, a marketing degree and i still don't it's know what the still fuck yeah <laughs> like some some shit works like yeah i had like it's all i think in my experience it's all just uh testing yeah out. testing 100 yeah, percent. actually just trial and error like it is yeah see it's what doesn't weird. work that doesn't work that gets a lot of engagement yeah it's 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 know. so weird like some of the things that i post get so much more engagement where i'm like oh that's just like a nothing post yeah and it gets heaps and then i'm like oh this one's going to be big doesn't get nothing like, yeah. so it's like it's weird but you you, you get used to it i guess yeah and um, so, the what's your plans now for the gym moving forward? I know you have a few other things lined up as yeah. well, um, but let's just keep on next gen for now. Yeah. So where do you want to see next gen? Say in like a year's time. A year's time, I'd like to get it to about a year from now. I'd like to get it to at least 150 members if I can. Yeah. Uh, it is tough in the Hawkesbury. I must admit, I think if I was to go and make a gym, say somewhere like Penrith, it'd be a lot easier. As much as the competition's harder, but there's so much more people. Yeah, a, a lot more people are willing to spend money over there too. I've noticed. I've noticed the Hawkesbury doesn't. A lot of them actually don't want to spend that much money. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. So a year's time, I'd like 150 members. I'd probably, I'll probably have. I'm just. I'm not. I'm not going to say anything, but I might. I might have a second one. 
Um, but if I was to do a second one, it would probably be um, in partnership with somebody, still yeah. the same name. But I think I just need that extra hand. Um, I don't want to do it all by myself again. Yeah. I don't want to set it up by myself again. That was the hardest part. Um, I'm going to, I can I can say this one, um, this Saturday I'm going to James Tamau's house to talk about um, the announcement of opening uh, Next Gen Fitness Kids. So we'll be taking... Um, we'll be taking everything we've learned and taking it into school programs. Um, so that'll, that'll be a good one. Jimmy's starting to think about what he's going to be doing after, after footy careers yeah. over. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I could be wrong again. I could be wrong that he, he might retire this year or next year or something. Exclusive, mate. <laughs> but okay. don't know if I'm about to say that or not, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, whatever. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, he is in the latter sca- stages of his yeah, 100%. career. And, um, but yeah, no, that's, well, I mean, that's a great thing for him. It's a great yeah. thing for you. Um, I think, uh, there's a lot of money to be made in in that 100%, as well. 100%, yeah. Um, you know, especially government schools. If government sign up for fucking New South Wales, mate. That's, that's it. Fucking thousands of schools there. Yeah. Um, and you could b- grow that pretty rapidly. 100%. Like, we've seen a lot of... I mean, I remember when I was in school, like... I mean, Healthy Harold probably started as just a fucking... <laughs> yeah, probably. You know, probably a couple of schools here and there. Yeah. And then it went, you know, every year you had Healthy Harold there. Yeah. You're like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the drugs, car. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, which one was that? I'm writing it down. <laughs> drugs to try. No. <laughs> ben doesn't do drugs. Nah. No, he's clean. I'm a, yeah, I'm a bit yeah, of a... Straighty 180, mate. Not had a puff of a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> Ever? <laughs> Never. In your life? Never. Really? Fucking hell. <laughs> Tell you what, I had a cigarette the other week and I threw up. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's how it makes me feel. Sick. Like, I still vape. I'm still addicted to nicotine. I'm yeah. Like, guys, All my worry. friends vape. Um, but yeah, fuck it. In terms of actual ciggy, I'm like, how did I used to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Even like just passive, like just, just being next to someone. I can't stand it. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stand it now either. Like, yeah. yeah, I just, a nice smell of a fucking strawberry kiwi. I don't mind. Yeah. I haven't had a vape before, (laughs) but I don't mind smelling it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so in terms of the, uh, the kids thing, have you done a little bit, you've done a little bit here and there already? Well, we've done like a... We've done the trial? trial runs. Yeah. Um, right now, we're just gonna we're gonna talk about when exactly what term we want to start in. We're not gonna start this term. We'll probably wait till the next term. I'm not sure exactly when that is. I got to find that out. But the best thing is James's partner Brittany. Um, she also wants to be involved, um, which is gonna help massively because this year we want to get it started. But Jimmy's like. With COVID and stuff, he's not actually allowed to um, be outside his bubble yeah. most of the time during footy season. So, so he's not actually allowed to come to school things. So, I actually will probably be going with James's partner just just to suss things out and see what works. Um, but Jimmy, man, like he's so so busy. Like, I reckon we've planned something maybe for three weeks now, and something always pop, pops up with him, eh? Yeah. Like, oh, the bloody. The buddy physio said he wants me in this time. So I can't come or I can't. Then we plan like to go out for lunch and he's like, oh, wait, I actually can't go out for lunch because of COVID. Yeah. He's not allowed to go anywhere. That's crazy, eh? So is that still a thing? Like That's they're not allowed to thing. go into indoor venues and they're shit? Not, they're not supposed to go anywhere but their house, training, all that stuff. That's fucked. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Like, I mean, they make them all get vaccinated. Oh, they do all this and stuff. And I mean... Whatever, if you whatever vaccination, whatever. I'm not yeah. gonna get into that. But the fact is, they made them all get vaccinated and say, you know, fucking, it'll be back to normal sort of thing. Yeah, it's and crazy. they've got harsher restrictions than they had fucking last year. They have like, way harsher restrictions, and it's it's tough, man. Like we got a few NRL boys um, that my brother-in-law, well, my partner's brother-in-law is. They're getting married next week, and they're they're supposed to be coming to the wedding, and they don't know if they'll be able to because because of COVID. Yeah. So it's just crazy what the NRL players are going through at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I guess, uh, now, is there anything else that, uh, you have your hands sort of on anything else in the pipeline? Well, um, right now I'm, I'm really trying to focus on the social media side of things. Uh, I think there's, is that to influence like online coaching? Yeah. As well, yeah I'm, I'm going to start doing online coaching soon. Maybe just a few little eBooks, shit like that. Um, it's, it's definitely something I need to start doing properly. And I think that's why I've just started to click about social media, um, like I've been, I've hit a bit of a brick wall with social media, but I've really, I've, I post like once a month. 
Um, but now I'm, I'm, I've, I've like every day I wake up and I, I go on my computer and I make about three, four posts a day. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty loaded full of content now. Um, and I, I think once I get that going, I'll, and I start to see a bit more engagement, I'll start posting more about online coaching. Yeah. Um, I just think because online coaching doesn't really have a, a, a max where classes do like group, you can only fit so many people in you can only get so much money out of the gym yeah um where online if you just if you just make this one 12-week program you can offer it to people around the world it's not actually you don't have to say oh people in the hawkesbury yeah because there's no there's no travel involved or anything like that um so i definitely am getting into the online space a bit more um i think for anyone who who's trying to be a pt i think you have to now yeah, I genuinely think it is too hard to make money just by doing PTs. Yeah, especially um, one-on-one. Oh, bro. And especially when it's not for yourself. Not many people start a gym. Like, like yeah. it's, it's really tough, man. Um, being, even just starting a personal training business and just trying to find two clients is hard. Yeah. Two clients that are going to pay you 70 to to $100. Yeah. For 45 minutes of work. Like, that's tough. Yeah. That's, a, that's big money, bro. It is, yeah. And people think, oh, they're getting like 70 an hour. They're making all this money. But like, at the start, bro, you're only getting like one to two clients a well, week. Well, exactly. It's a lot of, yeah, hours put in. And um, and not to mention, you know, all your marketing costs. Exactly. Your, uh, and that's that's if whatever, you're you know, that's if you're doing it food. for yourself. Yeah. So like, if you've got a boss, they'll pay you 30 bucks to do this PT and they'll source the PT, which is good, but they'll pay you like 30 bucks for the hour and keep the other 50. Yeah. Like they're the ones making the money and they're not even there. Yeah. That's why it's really tough to be a PT. I have never actually experienced being a PT for someone. I've never worked for someone. Yeah. Um, so I was lucky in that department, but for people, for new PTs, bro, like it's, it's going to be, it's going to get even tougher, I reckon, because it's, it's actually like such a, it's, it's getting so big to be, Everyone yeah. wants to be a coach these days. Yeah. Um, everyone wants to be a fucking influencer or whatever they call it. Like, yeah. Like, everyone wants to do this shit. And I guess the growth of social media has impacted that. That's what it is, man. Yeah. Like, it's just it's social media. Like, everyone's trying to live a life. They don't even know if they enjoy it, I don't reckon. Yeah. I don't they just think they would enjoy this life. Yeah. And then they don't understand you might have to get up before people go to work. You might have to go to the gym after people go to work because yeah. they can't train during work. So you might have to get up at four o'clock. You might have to be leaving at eight o'clock yeah. at night. So it's a definitely a tough industry. People don't think it's actually that that hard, yeah. um, but it's pretty intense. Um, I've got a mate, Reese. you know, Reese Manning, like yeah. shout out to him. He's thinking about going into the PT industry. So I'm trying to like, I'm trying to sort of, mentor him into what he needs to start doing and stuff like that yeah. and just just trying to make sure he doesn't he doesn't take it as hard and fail is it's almost like i actually feel like yeah it's it's it's, it's on me i've got to try and definitely train him because i i don't want to see anyone fail and i think that's what some people think with like they think we're all enemies like pts like like, like i can't like another pt or yeah but there's so many there's so many people in the world there's different ways to make money there's nutrition there's strength and conditioning yeah. there's sports programs like there's so much different ways in the fitness health industry you don't have to feel competition from anyone yeah and i think that's one thing i would like other people to realize like i've got i've got gyms that around here that block me on social media like i don't i don't i can't see anything on f45 um, really? And I don't even know them. I don't know who they are. Like, I don't care about them. Wow. And, like, they block me on social media. I have people from other gyms. Like, I know people in so the they, gym. Like, do they think you're going to, like, steal their clients or something? Like, I don't know, bro. Tagged and I have, them? Or? Yeah, maybe. I have no idea. But, like, everyone... Every, it's just I think a, that's pretty shitty. It's a big fucking competition for everyone. And I, I like to be the best always. But I'm not going to... I will not care if someone goes to someone else over me. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to hold that against you. It's up to you. Yeah. But, like, I just wish everyone would stop thinking they need to, like, oh, these guys are mine. Like, everything they need to stop being so competitive. And, like, I want to help Reese. I want to help Reese make fucking money. And for me to do that, I need to, re- re- like, everyone needs to realize that there's enough people for everyone. There's enough money out there. 
like we're not yeah. even getting a quarter of a zero zero point zero one percent of yeah. the money or in this industry like we need to all <laughs> just help each other out you know like yeah. that's the one thing i just wish everyone in the fitness industry would realize we're not enemies we're all trying to make a difference like everyone we're helping is like is seeing a better life because of us and i wish that's how they would start looking at things yeah like not just oh i need to make this money yeah. because this guy's taking my money and do you think the difference of opinion in terms of like health oh um let me like try and phrase this question properly, but um, there's so much information out there, so fucking much information, so much, and bro. you never know. There's multiple right ways, you know what so I mean? So many, so many right ways to get a result. And do you think that impacts upon that attitude of uh, I'm better than you or 100 percent a PT, 100 because of different, yeah, you believe different ways. You do yeah, it, ways. there's so many opinions to have. You you really got to find what you want, um, what you want to believe in. Yeah. Like, I'm a carnival. Um, I don't fucking tell anyone to be carnival unless people ask me, what do you do in a carnival? Um, but I just want to, like, I don't know if you remember two years ago, this vegan documentary came out on Netflix. Um, it was, I can't remember what it's called, but it was this huge Netflix documentary. Conspiracy? Nah, it was... Conspiracy. I, don't, I can't remember what it was, but they had all these people like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like all these people. Oh, the sports one. Yeah. You know and he yes. was like, he was saying, oh, he went vegan so he could do battle ropes for fucking 20 hours or some shit. Like I watched that and this is just like a good tip for PTs. You cannot just watch something and believe it straight away. Yeah. I went vegan for a month after that. Did you? Yeah, I went... I, yeah, I went vegan for like six months. I kept it on the down low. Yeah, I, I told a few too many people. <laughs> <laughs> now they say we roof it into a fucking steak yeah, or a chicken were. studio. Like, yeah. but what are you doing? I watched it and I'm like to my mum, to my stepdad, my girlfriend got her family on it. We got to be vegan. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like and, and the problem with that is like it, it, I did what a young person, young immature person would do. I just... I heard an opinion and I went straight for it. Yeah. And you gotta you gotta have your own opinion, you gotta do your own research. And I was just so scared, like they were showing all this stuff like meat makes your your blood shit and stuff like that. They were doing all this, but again, it's your opinion. I mean meat is a carcinogen. Yeah. That's a fact. It's hundred percent a fact, but but, but there was a lot of carcinogens in the like I mean They were saying shit like Meat also oh, has a lot of benefits for you as well. They were saying Oh, you can get more protein from peanut butter than a piece of steak. You would need a whole bucket of peanut yeah. butter to and beat a steak. The, also, there's the common sort of line from veganism, and I sort of believe this when I was vegan, is yeah. that uh, plant plant protein is what gives animals protein. <laughs> like, yeah. not gives them all protein, but... <clears throat> you can get a lot of protein from plants yeah. because that's actually what the animals that you're eating are yeah. eating. So that protein's going through them. And you can get protein from plants. There are plants out there with fucking lots of protein. Like yeah. pea, peas, you can have pea protein. Yeah. Don't suggest the powder. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Had it in a smoothie and nearly threw up. Right, like, but, but like what, yeah. So like what I'm trying to get at is I listened to this thing and I thought I have to do it. Yeah. And I did it for like, a month and there was even a time for the first time ever in the gym by myself I passed out like I passed out and I hit my head on the rack pretty bad and I don't know if this was it but I was I was it was my I was vegan for three four weeks and I didn't have enough energy yeah um and I, I've noticed with a lot of clients who actually want to be vegetarian and stuff because of because of their um, love for animals which is I, I completely support um but They've always struggled in the gym um, because they don't have meat in their life. But I'm not here to talk about meat or fucking... Actually, I do want to ask you about carnivore. Yeah. Like being a carnivore, if you don't mind. Yeah. Is that, so is that literally meat only? Meat only? Right, so I'm not I'm not a strict carnivore. I'm what you call carnivore-ish. So it's, you'd have like chips with a steak. I'll still have chips with a steak yeah. if, I, if I feel like I've earned them. If, I, if I've earned carbs, like last night... I had a big weekend um, at a Bucks party, first time I've drank since December. And on Monday, I had to prove to my clients that I could train hungover because I want them to train hungover sometimes. <laughs> so I did a 
an upper body session. Then I did the class with them to prove that I could. Then I went to Hawkey's training after. Fuck. So to me, that's <laughs> earning my carbs. So I had Subway that night. Yeah. So I still eat carbs. Carbs, I'm not... I'm See, not they're s- shutting down Subway stores. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's shit. I go there every Tuesday. Yeah. Nah, but I'm, I'm definitely like, I, I still take carbs, but I've never felt better when I just... When I since going carnival ish, I've never felt better with my energy levels. I no lo- longer take pre workout. I don't need energy drinks. So what would you have for like breakfast? Steak and eggs. Steak and eggs. Yeah. So I actually don't eat breakfast. I normally sometimes, most of the time, um, I fast till about eleven, twelve, and then yeah. I have steak and eggs for lunch, and then I might have some sort of snack uh, around three before gym. Then I go gym, do work, come home, and I'll probably have a similar meal. For yeah. I don't get sick of it really. Yeah. And I have I've got a client on it recently, um, Blake, who's who can't make the gym for a month. He's off for work for something, and he was worried about his results. So I told him to just I just I helped him go carnival for a month. I told him to go full carnival for a month, and he's lost like eight kilos in a month. And yeah, he and he used to take like. He wakes up at like four o'clock. He used to take like two energy drinks before work so he could yeah. just wake up a bit. It doesn't take it anymore. Yeah. It spikes your energy levels like crazy. Um, I'm definitely team carnivore and I will suggest it to anyone who asks me, but I'll never put it in your, f- I'll never put it in anyone's face. Like you yeah. need to take this or you're missing out. Um, but that's the Fuck, thing. I like, feel like it's steak now. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that's legit the best. But yeah, like I said, like PTs, you've got to have your own opinions. You've got to do your own research because there is a right way. There is some wrong ways, but there's a lot of right ways. Yeah. And there's so many people that like, like I, I always like to do ass to grass squats. Some PTs think you should only go 90 degree angles. Um, just, just knowing what's good for you, what yeah. works for you. Different things work for people. Like sometimes cardio doesn't work for people. Sometimes strength training doesn't work for people. And some trainers just do strength training. Some trainers just do bloody CrossFit. Everything works for different people. You just got to find exactly what works for you, what nutrition program makes you feel better. Yeah. It's genuinely about feeling better. You don't want to do something you hate, eat something you hate. You want to just, you want to try and find that thing that makes you happy. Like if it's strength training, if it's cardio training, whatever it is, if it's doing like some sort of athletic performance program, you just got to find what makes you happy. And if that is what's making you just a better overall healthier self, yeah. then that's that's really it. Like yeah. there shouldn't be any PTs that think their way is the only way because it works for right, it works the different ways for different people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, in terms of your personal life, obviously being so young and being yeah. a business owner, it, yeah. we're obviously... I mean, hats off to you because I don't think I could have done what you've done at, at 22 yeah. um, or at fucking 19. Um, yeah. But in terms of, so you've moved out of home now. Yeah. Um, so how do you find that with balancing, you know, obviously living out of home plus yeah. owning a business? It's tough. Making both work. It is tough, I'll be honest. Um, people think I don't do much, which I, I am so much, I have such a breezier life than all my clients, I must admit. Those guys are up at four o'clock, fucking concreting or some shit like that. Mechanics, like, and they get, they literally have to come from work to the six thirty night class, do a class, then go home, start it all again. Yeah, they're the real, the real guys. Like, they're the real people to me. My life is not hard, but people, people mistake it for, like, me being, me being lazy or something like that, which isn't the case. Like, as soon as Let's just say Emily works the mornings. So Emily's my partner. Um, she works the mornings and I do the afternoons slash nights. Emily does the mornings. She gets home at about 9.30, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is when I am on my computer um, trying to figure out what content I'm going to start posting, trying to work on my online programs, on what I need to pitch to Jimmy, um, everything. I want to maybe start a podcast one day. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing all of that. M is also working on her own online cause she's already, she's already up in that yeah. space. Yeah. Um, so she's in the other room doing her online stuff. We don't see each other till two thirty three. Okay. So, 
we haven't seen each other. Like, I don't wake up with her from 5 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock. We'll, we'll have a quick gym session together, which is fun. I like being able to train with my partner. Then she'll go home. I'm there from 3 till sometimes 2 till like 7.30. Yeah. I might have footy training after, get home at about 8.39, which is getting ready to go to bed yeah. for the morning class. So I think I think you've really got to find time for your people because if you don't, what's the point of owning a business? Yeah. Um, so like I took, I, I have a, a person, um, shout out to Mads, who, who has taken over my Saturday morning classes. Um, and now I can just say, okay, Saturdays, Sundays, me and Emma are doing something 100%. Yeah. Um, you've really got to just, just try and balance it out because if you don't, you'll start to, like, hate yourself. Yeah. And everything just starts getting glum. Like, I remember when I was having no help, I was doing what Emma was doing plus what I was doing. So, I was doing the mornings, afternoons. Yeah, it's so much. It was it? too much, bro. And I was actually saying to hate what I love. So, yeah. I think you've got to find the balance. If it doesn't make you as much money, don't worry about it as long as you're happy. Yeah. I wasn't happy. Time, when I was yeah, that's a really important note. 100%. I, I actually feel the same way at the moment in, in sort of the position I'm in. Um, yeah, I don't podcast just full time, guys. <laughs> no, Dream. They, know, they know I work at Clara Tabs, and um, it's it's a lot, man. Like it's yeah. it's I'm opening and closing yeah. these days. Yeah. Um, so that's you know for bistro, it's get there at you know ten thirty in the morning yeah. and leaving at ten thirty at night. Yeah. Um, and then you go home and you do it all again, and it's weekends, and it's like yeah, you know it's my days off are Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's the days I fit in my podcast. So I just feel like fuck, I don't have the time to just yeah, enjoy just chill. life, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm going to see if I can make some changes. Yeah. Do whatever. But, and you um, will. But, yeah, but I do get what you mean. That's good now that you've set it up in a way that yeah, you have set that it, time. Yeah, I've know? set it up in a way. Um, I think I'd probably I'd probably like to take maybe a day or two more off. Um, I can't do it yet um, because I'm just not ready to. Yeah. But... I will one day probably just say, okay, I'm taking two days off. I'm either going to go do something else or yeah, I'm going to just spend more time with them yeah. um, or my family. Um, but, like, it is hard working nights, bro. Like, I miss a lot of like, birthdays with my niece, nephews, like my, my sisters, all that stuff. Yeah, They can't do weekends sometimes because some of them work in hospitality, so they yeah. have to work Saturday, Sunday. Some do other things. Um, like, I missed... My nephew's, it doesn't mean much, but year six formal thing. You can't, as much as like you, you, you can balance it as much as you want, um, there's things you have to sacrifice. And you have to realize that being a PT, for anyone who wants to be one, uh, you do have to make a lot of sacrifices. And one thing, if you aren't working for yourself, you'll have to sacrifice is sleep and time. And the worst thing you can sacrifice is time, but at the start, you just... You you got to do it, man. Like some like I was up at four sometimes, get and then getting home at seven, yeah. Like just to try and pay my gym rent because yeah. I had to do PTs. But now that I've got enough classes, um, it doesn't matter. With PTs, it's tough because if they don't show up, bro, that's like eighty dollars gone. Yeah. If they don't show up, yeah. If they if they're sick for the week and then they're coming twice, that's one hundred and sixty dollars gone. Yeah. So. You might be short on rent, <laughs> yeah. so you literally have to try and find more PTs to to try and just to try and make the same amount of money as you did last week. Yeah, that's the hardest part about being a PT. You have to be there to make money. Where yeah. with the gym, with the group classes, they're all automatic debits. They come out each every Tuesday. Yeah, if they don't come, doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm getting paid either way. Yeah, um, no, that's good. That's yeah. the best way to do it. And did have you set it up as a 24? I've set it up as 24 seven, but yeah. only for my clients. Okay, yeah. Um, I trust my clients to. It's hard once I start. Once I start outreaching to 24 seven people, I feel like some 24 seven people are just major douches. Yeah, and I never want my clients, my group clients, who. I've had for three years to feel intimidated when they go in the gym by well, themselves. Exactly, and they shouldn't because I mean they they've been there from the exactly. beginning. Exactly, and the the culture that you've built there is it's all about culture. Yeah, and I think yeah, if you open it up to you know Tom, Dick, and Harry to Bruh. fucking go there and flex their flex roid, their muscles, and muscles, and start and, offering roids to, in the gym. Yeah, like oh, it's, bro, it's, it's <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's just it's just different, bro. Like if if I, I don't want to ever go into the gym by myself and see someone in them by themselves and not know who they are. Yeah. I know every single client. There's whatever how many there is ninety people. I know what they do. I know their names. I know everything about them. Yeah. Um. And I think that's what gym owners should aspire to be. I hate walking. I hate knowing that gym owners don't actually know who's paying them. Yeah. And I think that's something I've really tried to to make really important. I play, I play fucking PlayStation with some of my clients. I go out, I go out on Friday nights, Saturday nights with my clients. Like. Um, we do things outside of the gym as well as inside the gym. Like, we are all best mates. Yeah. Um, like, Em was saying that most of them will probably be invited to our wedding. Like, if we, when we have a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Um, but, like, we're that close. And I think that's, that's the best thing about it. I never feel like I'm actually going to work. And I think that's the goal that you really want to make. You really want to create when you're, when you're trying to be a PT or a class trainer or whatever you're trying to do. If you just start that community vibe yeah. um you'll never look back because it'll just make it so much easier for you to work in yeah um i watched this guy named ice his name's isaac john he he owns um he started yktr and he said there's the two most important things in business is the two cc's um not the drink the <laughs> that's your drink, okay. yeah. um <laughs> it's it's content and community and i think for, for us to get people in to create the community, we had to we had to post content. Yeah. And once we started posting content about the gym, com- people came in. And without people coming in, we can't make community. So once people started coming in, we made community. So if you just stick with the content, community, content, community, you just keep going in a circle, more people come, that community evolves. Um, I think that's the most... I, I've never... If I ever do, like, he does these cool things like team meeting videos and stuff like that. And if I ever have a team meeting once I expand or once I get a few more people, like a few more trainers in my gym, I think the first thing I'll always start with is just writing on a board, content and community. Yeah. If you get those two things right, you'll be sweet. Yeah. That's the most important thing, in my opinion, in business. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And um, I guess to uh, sort of, uh, sort of, Wrap it up, yep. I guess. Uh, not wrap it up. I don't know, you can talk for a fucking however long you want, mate. <laughs> Speak for everybody, J Mac. Um, <laughs> don't choke. Um, but uh, so with, um, I guess you you touched on, you know, uh, working with, you know, M and not seeing each other that much. But do you think, does business ever have a strain on your relationship at all? Because you guys seem like, to anyone who knows you, you always seem very like, okay, all good, mate. All good. All good. Nah, it all doesn't. All the time. It doesn't? If, if you have the right one, it, they they should know, not not that she's not important, but my goals are important as well, and yeah. her goals are important. Yeah. Um, if we really want to do the shit we say we want to do, like we, bro, sometimes fuck, our goals are fucking limitless. Like we, we sometimes, like I want to fucking train, like I, my goal is to, to one day train some famous dude, I can like at, at a Kevin Hart height. Yeah. Like sometimes our goals are too much, but if you really do have a partner or a you friend, mean like a height of fame. Yeah, or, like like, like actual height. No, no, <laughs> that's a terrible like, so you height. Want just, you want to train five foot three guys? Okay, sweet. Nah, <laughs> he's height of fame, but like like. You, if you really do have the partner that really wants to succeed with you, yeah, you will. You will have those few years, those few grind years where you don't go out much. Me and him go out once, maybe twice a week. Um, we can't spend too much money because we've just moved out of our own, of our our parents' house. Um, we just we've we've got a new dog. Like it's all it's all it's all like happening, and we know if we really want to like live in the the house we want to live in own the the bloody cars we want to own like we know that we just need to grind and if that means sacrificing a few nights out or a bit more netflix and chill together then then we know that's that's the case that's just how it has to be yeah um i think it once you find that person to grind with i don't think there's anything better eh? yeah yeah and i mean exactly you're not doing it by yourself so that's right really like if you're gonna miss out on anything you're missing out on it together together yeah yeah. like i still i still see her every day um sometimes we work together 
sometimes she's in the gym taking photos while I'm running the class. Like, yeah. we still, we still, like, it's not like we, we don't see each other for yeah. days. Like, it, we always see each other. We always make sure when we are together, we're together. Um, as much as it is her first always, um, my goals are almost just important as her. Yeah. Um, and to her, her goals are almost just important to, to herself. Like, she's got a lot of shit going on too. Um, so, yeah, that's we want to be the best at what we what we do. And to do that, we really do have to just grind for a few years. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Um, to anyone watching, um, what would you like to say to them in terms of next gen, uh, in terms of uh, whatever else you're going to do, the next gen kids thing, um, yeah. just to get people involved? Um, take it away. Yeah, well... It's it's really like it's it's up to you guys. We I genuinely believe like next gen changes lives every day. Um, I've got so many people who look at so many people who aren't as fit or don't look as good as what people do in the gym who don't realise that they all looked how these guys did before. Yeah. Um, I've got people that were with me for three years who people look at now and say, oh, they all look too fit. I don't really want to be in that scenario with them yeah but they were in the exact same person's shoes three years ago you just got to start and if you ever like do you want to do you want to join next gen it'll it'll probably be a game changer for you the community is unreal um if you have any if you have any like leads with schools or you're a teacher or anything like that we'd love to we'd love to start working at your whatever school you are working at um, and that's about it, bro. Like, just just try and get out there. Do what you want to do. Love what you do. I always preach, like, you should always want to... Don't, don't go chasing money. Chase happiness. And it sounds fucking gay and corny, but if you really do love what you do, you'll never feel like working. It's such a cheesy line, but, but it, it is the truth. And I've got people who don't want to... Who might be taking pay cuts to do what they actually love when like what they're loving what to do yeah and i love that for them like i love that they've done that because of what i've been saying yeah. like i've had people tell me i've taken a, a not that a pay cut's great but like i've taken a pay cut to do what i want love you know well, what it's i mean it's better than being unhappy isn't it's it? better than being unhappy yeah. everything's better than being unhappy yeah so just love what you do um and just keep keep inspiring keep aspiring like do change change lives i guess you know what i mean Know what you mean, brother? Well, thank you very much for coming in. All good, and, bro. Uh, That's speaking good. free with Maddie G. Um, and yeah, guys, go check out Next Gen. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. And remember, guys, speak free with Maddie G.